Hey guys, I'm Archie, and welcome to the sixth video in my SDL2 tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be making our rect that's on the screen move around using SDL event polling. I've already made a couple videos involving event polling, but in this video we're actually going to be using what we've learned to make the square move around. First, we're going to go into the rect class, and we're going to make a poll events function. Let's call it void poll events. We can go ahead and copy this, go into rect.cpp, and make a function for it in here. And put rect right here. There we go, it's part of the rect class. So to pull events, we're going to do the same thing as what we did in the window class. So if we go into window.cpp, we have an SDL event variable, and then we use the SDL pull event function to see if something actually occurred, and then we can take a look at that. So we're going to do the same thing here, SDL event, event. Then we're going to say if SDL poll event, and then pass in the event we just made, then do something. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at if they pressed a key. I'm not going to be using a switch statement because this is the only thing I want to look at. So I could straight out just say if event dot type equals equals sdl key down. So if a key was pressed, then we can make a switch statement now. We could do switch event dot key dot key sim dot sim and let's say they press left. Case sdl k left. If they press left, we want to move the square left. All we have to do is just take the x coordinate of our rectangle and move it left, and I'm going to do it by 10 pixels. If we go inside rect.h, here's the x variable, it's the x coordinate on the screen, so we'll just subtract 10 from this x here. So we'll do x minus equals 10, and we'll break it. Now if we go into main.cpp, we can call this function. So we could go rect.polleEvents, and if we run it, here it is, if I start moving left, or click the left button, you can see the square is moving left, and it continues moving off the screen as well. So it works. Let's go ahead and add this functionality to all the arrows. We could say case sdl k right. We could say x plus equals 10, and break it. Now if it moves up, case sdl k up. Now we're actually going to be looking at the y coordinate. So here is our y coordinate of the square, and we are going to subtract 10 from it. I haven't actually gone over the SDL coordinate system, but let me really quickly go over it. Let me comment this out and just run it. The coordinate 0, 0 on the screen is in the top left corner. If you move to the right, then the x coordinate increases. If you move down, the y coordinate increases. That might be kind of weird because generally in math, if you move up, then the y increases, and if you move down, the y decreases, but here the y increases as you go down. So if you wanted to find the coordinate that has the largest possible x coordinate and the largest possible y coordinate, it would be right here. Because it's the farthest down, so the, the y is the highest possible, and it's the farthest to the right, so the x is the highest. So again, 0, 0 is right here. As you move down, y increases. As you move to the right, x increases. So I'm going to close out of this, and now we're going to say if they pressed up, then we're going to decrease our y, y minus equals 10, because again the higher you go the lower the y coordinate is. Now we can break it and do the same for down, sdlk down, we're going to say y plus equals 10. Once again as you go down the y increases and we'll break it. Now we can run it, and we can use all of our keys. So I'm pressing down, I'm pressing right, I'm pressing up, and I'm pressing left, and it all works. Now you're probably thinking, well, we've achieved everything we wanted to do for this video, but there's a little bit of a bug. If I click escape right now, it's not going to work. I can keep clicking it as much as I want, and it's not working. In case you don't remember, I made escape close the window, but clearly it wasn't closing when I was clicking escape. The problem is that in both of our poll events functions, here's one, 
here's two, we're calling both of them. In both of these functions, we're making unique events and calling SDL pull event on those events. So here's one case, and then when you go into window.cpp, here is another case. So we have, we're calling SDL pull event here, and we're calling SDL pull event here, and we're constantly doing both of those. What ends up happening is they kind of start interfering with each other. So our goal is to use one single SDL pull event call and one single SDL event variable on both of these classes. To do that, let's go into main.cpp and we can make like a temporary function that can combine both of their pull events functions but use the same SDL event and only call SDL event once per iteration. So we're going to call this void pull events and we're going to pass in the window that we want to pull the events for so we could say window reference window we also want to pass in the rect that we want to pull events for so rect reference rect first we're going to make an sdl event and call event then we're going to say if sdl pull event pass in the event we just made then we're going to call the pull events functions from the window and from the rect using this event here. So we're going to say rect.pull events and we're going to pass in the event here. We're going to pass in this event and we're also going to do window.pull events and pass in the event. Uh, we actually haven't made a parameter yet, I'm going to do that in a moment. But as you can see, we're going to end up using one SDL pull events function and one variable, and we're going to be using this variable throughout these functions. If we go back into window.cpp, all we need now is this. We don't need this SDL event right here because we're going to end up passing it in. We don't need this call right here because that's done here. So we can actually just take this delete everything we don't need and now we have this we also need to pass it in so we're going to say sdl event we can make it by reference why not event and make sure you add that to window.h in the definition there you go so now when we go into main we have this event that we made this sdl event it calls SDL pull event on it, then it passes that event into this function. And if we go into the function, first it's, it looks at the event's type and then it determines, well, what do we want to do if it was SDL quit? What do we want to do if it's SDL key down? Great. Now we're going to do the same exact thing for the rect function. So again, we don't need this because that's in our main. We don't need this. This is in our main. All we need is this stuff. So we're going to take that out and that's going to be our function. And we need to take it in as a parameter. SDL event, event. Copy this, go into rec.h, and add that into the declaration there. Now we don't have any more errors. Both functions are using the same event, and we're, and we're only calling this SDL pull event function once, rather than calling it every time you pull the rects event and the window event. Inside here, we can delete the pull event function calling and simply just write pull events and this is the pull events from right here and obviously we put two parameters in here we have to pass in our window window and we're going to pass in our rect so this pull events function is responsible for pulling the events of the rectangle and the window but separately still though using one SDL pull event call. If we run this now, the rect should still have the ability to move around in all directions. And if I click escape, it escapes. So we don't have any interference, we're only calling this once, and everything works. This is not very practical because if we start adding more rects to the screen, then we're going to need to keep adding parameters to this function for the various rects that we want to put in. Eventually we'll make a different workaround. We're not going to use this single function here. Maybe we'll make a class. But for now, we did what we wanted to do, and there's no bugs. So I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you next time.